okay, it looked like everything was in focus and you could see everything that I was painting. So I'm back. Now what I'll go ahead and I'm doing, right here in this area, since I had the pink next to the white on the palette, I'm gonna go ahead here and in this decorative uh, French um, painting here is a bouquet of flowers. So I'm just gonna go ahead, since I had this pink next to the white, and I was using the white on the lights, I'm just gonna go ahead here and color this area in. And to those of you that are painted in other mediums, it just kind of feels like I'm kind of mimicking the motion that I would mimic in watercolor if I had a wet canvas and I was letting the paints just flow into the natural crevices of the canvas, of the paper, the watercolor paper. Of course, they do have watercolor canvas now, but I never painted on the watercolor canvas. I painted on watercolor paper. Okay, there's just so many uh, new things available with art now, nowadays. And I'm doing the poured painting as well. Poured paintings are just things that hopefully I will get an Etsy shop and sell in an Etsy shop. But realism is what I've been trained in and realism is what I've taught for 14 years prior to the flood. And so I'm really hoping to get these videos going. Uh, and by year's end, you'll be able to, uh, you know, log in and paint along with me on some of your favorite things. And that's the intent. Grabbing a little bit of the blue on my brush because it's a shadow here. And pink and blue makes kind of a hazy lavender shadow. That I thought would be pretty in here. The method that I teach is painting from your photographs. And throughout the year so many people have told me normally when you see an artist work you're not necessarily seeing the photograph that they painted it from. And that's kind of a relief to those that are just started and they're worried that they cannot paint a particular photograph because it may appear to be too hard. I do say to them, no one's gonna be looking at your photograph and comparing to see if you paint it as good as the photograph. And it works the same way as well. There have been times that people see a photograph that I painted from. A lot of times I'll just position the photograph along with the painting. Nearby on a little easel or something as I painted from an original photograph by Carol Irby Gray. And I've had them tell me numerous times, oh, your, your uh, painting is so much better than the photograph. Well, you know something? You're the artist when you're painting and what you're doing is interpreting your interpretation of that particular photograph or scene, if you will. Okay, so moving right along, I'm gonna go back up in here. And I'm gonna dab. Just gonna, you're gonna keep seeing me go back and forth and dabbing on the illuminated white lights up here. And the reason being is if I have paint on my brush and I have not totally got the lights to the point of illumination that they should be. Before I wash the brush and get the white off the brush, I'm going to dab it somewhere close by on the canvas that it's needed. And like I was telling you a while ago, always focus not only on what you're working on, but the surrounding five or six inch area of your canvas and keep adding those colors into your palette 
as you progress. I paint from the back, I paint from the back to the front, and I paint from the top down. And I try to pretty much tweak and finish an area before moving on. There are, inst there are times that that does not uh, hold true. And when I see those, I will, I will point those out to you. Now, as I'm looking, this is a good example right here. As I'm looking back over here, I see that the way that this uh, ornamental design is here, I see that it appears to have light cast onto it at an angle that makes the gold look a little brighter right in here. And actually, now that I'm going back up here and I'm looking a little wider right here and then a little dots of white in here and since I have the white on the palette perfect time for me to dab in this area right here this area is nice and dry and also right there and also right here awesome and also right there awesome and also right there real good good use of the white paint that was still on my palette And I don't know if you've noticed or not, but right here, there's a light bulb that is totally out of this ornament. Now, as an artist, I have the choice. Do you want to just go ahead and paint the light bulb in? Okay, do you want to paint the light bulb in? Let me point with this end of the brush. Maybe you can see it better. Do I want to put, uh, paint the light bulb out or do I want to paint it in? And you know, since I'm painting for my photograph and since it's from a photograph taken in Paris, I think I'm going to leave the light bulb out. So, I think... I'm going to let that, I'm going to stay true to the photograph. And I'm going to let that be a, I'm going to opt to let that be a black space. But the light bulb is not in. No right or wrong about how I would interpret that, interpret that. Since I have the black on my brush. I'm just going to go ahead and cast it up here and make the shadow overhead, the sweeping motion. I'll go ahead and cast it right here too, since it's on my brush.
It's free YouTuber music, courtesy of King Lion. Watching the area, scouting around in the adjacent area, based on the paint that's on my palette. And looking for the areas that I can use that paint. To those of you that may have not heard me say, I come across my areas that I do not want to lose the outline from my transferring the graphite paper. I transfer my images onto my canvas with graphite paper. So I come back and I sharpie in with a permanent sharpie areas that I do not want to paint through and I do not want to lose. So. Sometimes when I'm in a delicate area, I have to make several passes over the Sharpie since it's a permanent Sharpie. To break up the hard edges. I'm really considered a fast painter. But this is not about how fast you are. This is about enjoying the process. It's so relaxing, it's like therapy. And not only do you want to enjoy the process, you will have beautiful family heirlooms forever that you can pass on to your children. And, uh, one of the reasons that I'm so excited about my YouTube channel is because you can paint along with it with me and you can create beautiful paintings and like I said I'm a teacher and if I can just teach one person the skill set necessary share with them and show them to add a lot a lot of happiness into your life it's an awesome thing to have done
Okay, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and cover this in a swipe since I will still be able to have the outlines of the ornamental design underneath there, even though I'm painting through it. Same thing here, the beard. I'm just gonna paint through the beard because I can still see the outline of the lines. Same thing here. Just to get some speed up, I'm gonna paint through the designs. Paint through the Sharpie. Because it will still be there and I can still see it. Same thing with the face. I'm gonna go ahead and just paint through the face. I can still see the graphite lines. Putting this shadow back in that I had kind of painted through. Got a piece of paint clunked up right there. background is supposed to be pulled down into here. Kind of cuts through that railing right there. Doesn't really define it. Notice this goes on up a little further here.
painting has added so much joy into my life. Okay, I don't know if you can see me or not because it says low battery and the screen was black. Let me check it out.